the other day Kirby and I dropped off the trailer in my front yard and I was like, oh, I'll just move it with the white Jeep and put it back in the building. And then I backed the Jeep up and found that this is the world's only Grand Cherokee that doesn't have a trailer hitch. So today, uh, probably much to the enjoyment of my neighbors, I will be moving the trailer out of my front yard using my father-in-law's Grand Cherokee. Bob is gonna help. There. Step one complete. So now I'm taking the trailer to my office to unload office chairs or whatever and the credenzas and then back to the building to put it where it goes. Ideally, I would have been able to use the trailer this week to go get the silver Honda, but not having Laura's car made that kind of a non-starter. I don't want to tow with a rental car and I don't have a hitch on that white Jeep. Something about this trailer, every time I seem to move it and then put it back into the building, uh, it's like snowy out, so I always end up having to put a soaking wet trailer inside the nice dry building. Dad, let's sell this trailer and buy like a 16 foot enclosed spread axle trailer. I think that would be so much sweeter. Here's a small update on my car situation. I decided to settle with the insurance company. There was about $11,000 worth of reported damage on it. So they're sending me a check and I found a buyer for the car. So basically I'm gonna get out of that one. I also have arranged to purchase a from Tennessee. So, and Christmas is in the middle of that. So it won't be here probably until the first of the year, but it'll be sweet. Update on Laura's car. While I was at the dealer, they diagnosed the issue being related to the proximity sensors that are in the rear bumper. And essentially what they think happened is the car got like tagged in a parking garage. So there was damage to the rear bumper. Like the insurance claim is filed on that one and the, the body shop ordered the parts and we're waiting on getting the parts in to take it in for service because it still drove fine. It just had a proximity sensor error which didn't seem to impact drivability. What appears to have happened is that like the wiring harness was compromised. So water got into that system and it freaked out the CAN bus system, which is why it threw all those errors. So that repair uh, was like $1,700, but I was able to get the insurance company to pay for that too, since I figured I'm already gonna be smoked for insurance premiums with the settlement on the E-Class. There's already an insurance claim on the GL anyways. So I basically have nothing to lose. That $1,700 is, probably gonna be added to my insurance premium anyway, so I might as well see if I could add it to the claim because it is related to it. Nationwide insurance, absolutely awesome. It has taken care of both claims like flawlessly, absolutely no headaches, no arguments. Like I highly recommend them. I may make another video if my premiums go through the roof, but at this point I kind of feel like I deserve it because I've had massive claims in the last 30 days. If you don't know what I do for a living, I manage a mortgage company in Traverse City, Petoskey, Cadillac, Lake City, and Manton, Michigan. So basically I have a team of loan officers that I uh, work with and we do mortgages for people that want to buy houses. All right, ready to drop the trailer, move the chairs. Chairs are unloaded and I can get out of here. The lift is fully functioning, goes up, down, has the ramps. I can park a car on it. I just need to finish the um, safety release thing and then I'll be good to go. Got a pretty decent space over here to walk in. I think I might move it just a little bit further over, but that's it.